Hi and welcome back to the photographycourse.net YouTube channel. Today I'd like to talk to you about something that's really essential to good photography and this is what we call the exposure triangle. This is a little bit of photography jargon that when you understand what it is and how it functions it'll help you make better photos consistently. The exposure triangle, as the name suggests, consists of three things that affect the exposure of your photo. That's how bright or how dark your photograph is. These three things are the aperture and the shutter speed and the ISO setting in your camera. They all function independently, but combined they all affect how bright or how dark your photos will be. The aperture is a diaphragm in the lens that functions very similar to the way that the iris in our eyes function. When it's bright our iris is small because we need to have less light coming in because it's so bright. At night or in dark places our irises open up because it's dark and we need to have as much light as possible coming in so that we can see. And it works the same way on a camera. In bright light situations you're going to want to use a narrow aperture and in darker situations you're going to want to use a wider aperture because it lets more light into the camera. You've also then got to work with the shutter speed. This controls the duration of time that the sensor in your camera or the film in your camera is exposed to light. When you press the shutter release button on a camera it opens the first curtain of the shutter and then the second curtain will close to block the light from the sensor again. And the duration that the sensor is exposed to light we call the shutter speed. This is measured in fractions of seconds or seconds or for really long durations it's measured in minutes or even hours. And so depending on how much light there is when you're taking photographs, whether it's a bright sunny day, whether it's a cloudy day like today, or if you're indoors or at night time or somewhere dark, you've got to think about the shutter speed that you're using and how this relates to the aperture setting that you're using as well. Now the third thing that you need to think about is the ISO. And personally I treat my ISO like the foundation of the exposure triangle. ISO is how responsive your camera sensor is to light or how responsive the film that's in your camera is to light. The big thing with digital photography is that you can change the ISO in between each frame that you take. With film photography you've got to expose the whole roll of film at the same ISO otherwise it won't be able to be processed correctly. So in bright light situations you can use a low ISO, say ISO 100 or 200, quite often I'll use ISO 400. But if you're photographing in low light situations you're going to need to use a higher ISO setting. But it's still best to try and keep it as low as possible and the reason for this is because the higher your ISO setting the lower image quality you're going to achieve because the camera sensor is ramping up the energy and it has an effect of creating digital noise and images. This varies from camera to camera. The smaller and cheaper the sensor is in a camera, the more likely you're going to get problems using higher ISOs. If you're using a higher end full frame camera, then the ISO you can use will be much higher before you start to really notice any digital noise or other degrading of the image. So these are the three parts of the exposure triangle, your aperture, your shutter speed and your ISO. And when you understand how these things work together you're able to make the best decisions about creating the type of exposure you want. And of course working with aperture and working with shutter speed you've got to think about depth of field with the aperture that you're using and with the shutter speed you've got to think about camera movement or subject movement. So if there's anything moving, if your camera's moving or your subject is moving and you're using a shutter speed that's too slow because maybe you're in a dark situation you're likely to get some blurring happening. And if you're in a dark situation using a higher ISO then you run the risk of running into some digital noise in your image. 
So you've got to think about these things, but it's really not that difficult. If you are really intent on using your camera like a point and shoot where it does everything for you, then you don't need to think about it so much. But if you want to experiment, if you want to control your camera manually and choose the type of exposure that you want so that you're getting exactly the image that you're looking for, then you need to be in control of these three exposure settings to make the most of your photography. And when you are working with your camera manually like this, you're going to need to look at the monitor on the back of your camera to see how bright your image is or how dark it might be. Or the way I prefer to do it is to read the exposure meter. And this is a readout that you'll see in your camera's viewfinder or on the monitor if you're using live view. And it will give you an indication of what the camera is understanding as a correct exposure. And this is a whole other lesson to learn how to use this and we'll tackle that in another video. I hope you've learned something from this video today. If you have, please give us a thumbs up and click the subscribe button and that bell icon so that you can stay up to date with the PhotographyCourse.net YouTube channel whenever we release new videos. Thanks for watching.